Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome to another Supreme Commander Epic Now. The pros have had a good, pretty good showing lately, haven't they? We've had that end of year tourney with Zock and Petrick, that awesome final. We've had ladder matches, we've even had some decent custom 4v4s. What we haven't had, we haven't had a good solid showing from my Joes, my bros, my fellow army of amateurs, the masters of mediocrity, denizens of decentralized strategic thinking, if you will. Uh, all the people that kind of hover around the... Uh, kind of, I was about to say a thousand mark, but a lot of these guys are, are a little bit over that. So, uh, yeah, it's, they're probably much better than me. But anyway, they're not the pros. I feel solidarity with these guys. And it's going to be an epic, and they're amateurs, so it's probably going to run over a little bit because they can't bump each other off. So if you haven't got time to watch it now, then chuck it in your Watch Later playlist on YouTube and catch it when you've got time. But for those of you who can stick around and join me, Get ready as we move over to Anchor version 2. I'm ready, you guys are ready, and the players are sure as hell ready. So let's go on over to the game zone and see how these guys are going to get on Ching. A ka -ching. Gotta love this map. A bit By the way, apologies in advance for any hacking or coughing I might do through this uh, video. There might be a few splutters here. I'm still suffering from uh, a little bit of a cough. The remnants of sinusitis, which is like having a ra railway spike repeatedly hammered through your face. Uh, which is why uh, I haven't been on your screens for a couple of weeks. Apologies for that. But if you could put up with the hacking, I know you're going to love today's game. All right, we'll call this Team 1 up here at the top and this Team 2 down here at the bottom. The best part is the UI agrees with me. Going first for Team 1 over here in Elephantine Grey. Going Cybran, opening first land. It's Maptok. Next up in the center, we've got... Tim Overdyke 1997, or Tim as we shall be referring to him today, going Aeon in Breast Cancer Awareness Pink, opening first land. Team member number three on the eastern edge, it's uh, it's either Droidio, or rather unfortunately I think it's more Dr. Oidio, which is just doesn't sound, I think Droidio sounds nicer, don't you? But it's clearly Dr. Oidio. Uh, which is going to take me oh, that's an extra syllable or two in there, it's just really annoying. Uh, Alright, there he is. Anyway, he's going Seraphim. He's going Cyanide Sion and he's opening first land. And last but not least, rearguard air position, if you will. It is uh, Ryunosuke. 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 It's, it's Ryan. Anyway, and he's going <laughs> on opening first air in Mellow Yellow. So that's team number one. Taking a look at team two, starting over here in Electric Blue. It's McNeil. He's going UEF. How very attractive. Going first and second land, team number number two for team two. It's front collar in Ferrari red this time and going Seraphim. He opened first land, strutting his stuff towards the middle. Team member number three for team two, it's Icononics. It's going Cybrin, bless him, opening first land, going second air. And last but not least, rear guard air position in baby blue, it's Alflo. And he's going air on how very sensible opening first land and going second air there we go so that's what we're at game qualities at 93 percent that's what we consider a balanced game here at guilecast and the uh, it's a slightly unbalanced in terms of the way the uh, distribution is set team one seems to be a slightly more consistent ranging from a thousand to fourteen hundred whereas we have outflow on eight hundred there for uh team two going up to uh 1400 there for mcneil so you know it's uh, not that that really means anything you know all these guys are joe's the margin of error is not so significant i wouldn't uh, imagine we've got a couple of mech marines stationed up there by mcneil just waiting to plunge onto this three three tiered plateau up the top with mexes and reclaim stationed at different tiers looking uh, obviously lying in wait there for any potential mgs on the way in fact it's got another lab and another snoop over to the right as well one engineer there on his todd from icononics going for that little island in the bottom right hand corner would you look at that ice pack it's a lot of floating glacial ice there i hate it when they fly it's flying ice it's a nightmare there's even a few flying trees in there uh, so, yeah, perhaps whoever made the map would like to take a look at that. Just uh, sort one or two of the uh, underlying graphical issues out. That wouldn't be a bad thing. Otherwise, the map is pretty superb, though, it has to be said. Front collar strutting his stuff towards the center with his com. Nearest opponent is his mirror over here. It's Tim Overdyke. He's rolled forward with his commander as well. He's getting three land factories in around this mass extractor. It's going to provide him with good, solid 
quick centralized reinforcements there to the middle. Lots of T1 floaty floaty, no doubt, going to be pouring in here. Going to make it difficult for front collar to sustain control of the stem of that anchor. In comes a chariot with uh, three engineers on board, I think, from Ryan. Scout plane's going to get a read on that, but not before the NGs are dropped off. It doesn't look like... Uh, Icononics is going straight for the grab. He's more interested in just getting what reclaim he can. Whereas, uh, yeah, Ryan definitely more concerned with getting set up, go straight for the mass extractor. It would be wise to throw down a land factory. Ah, uh, but what have we got here? So, yeah, that third engineer that was dropped off right at the top of the hill there. Gonna throw down a land factory. And that, I tentatively say, might look like it's a grab there for Team 1. Ryan at a thousand. Uh, Icononics, uh, one of their, well, their second highest rated player there at 1300. Not sure how significant that will be, but we'll wait and see. One low mantis breaching the top of the mountain here. Gets a couple of kills, but then properly gets reclaimed. Those engineers were working on an anti air turret. Do with getting a T1 PD online now that we've got a. Uh, Sort of a trickle of mantis heading up the mountain here. This time might not be so lucky. Could do with getting the reclaim order off quickly, but attention is elsewhere. NG versus mantis. Oh, would you look at that? Mantis survives only to get gunned down by a lab up here. McNeil could have saved his brethren, but uh, alas, something somewhere else was clearly more important. Dr. Oidio strutting his stuff onto the anchor now with his com. Where is he headed? It's like he's headed down here to the end. Not exactly sure why. That's probably a temporary waypoint. Lots of commitment from Maptok and McNeil trying to get the grab on, on this uh, mountain. And there's a good seven mass extractors to be grabbed up here. And if you count... The hydros, there's two of them down there at the base of the mountain. So it's a pretty resource-rich field if you're able to take and hold it. Potentially reasonably defensible as well. Especially if you can set up shop with some emplacements up here. In these three sections. Now flow as determined to get set up there as anybody else. Air dropping a couple of engineers. Up to the top there. What's going on in the naval game? So Icononics with two shipyards complete. Three shipyards online for Dr. Oidio. Spat out a couple of suicles there. The Seraphim subs. And now front collar and Tim engaging in one another with their comms. And would you look at the numbers of auroras that Tim has amassed. Hasn't yet got them into a position where they're able to assist. The comm is doing most of the heavy lifting right now. Front collar knows he's outnumbered though. Happy to withdraw. Definitely the sensible decision there. And those four factories right at the front providing excellent reinforcement rates for team one in the center of the map Tim looking like he's going to continue to press vulnerable T1 radar good target of opportunity that's going to go down Intel cut down in the center for team two. McNeil is he getting some emplacements online securing his position up here. Might need to move across and assist front collar who is still giving up ground to Tim although Tim Overdyke's forces beginning to wane in number. Might need to pause the attack and instead of Moving in to engage in the center, McNeil is just going to send his forces on a bit of a 
Kind of a run by to engage Mapdoc. Mapdoc getting a, an upgrade on his com. T2 trying to contend with McNeil, who's throwing down T2 point defenses. Meanwhile, Mapdoc engaging on the mountain once again. Interesting. Alflo got an engineer up there, but didn't throw down any of his own factories. Three naval yards now online for Icononics. Three apiece for both of the two naval players. T2 upgrade on the way for Tim. Front collar still unupgraded. Take a moment to have a very quick look at what's happening on the eco side of things. Team 2 with a 10 overall mass advantage. Not statistically significant, I would say, at this point of the game. Approaching 10 minutes, 10 mass out of 140, 150 kind of level. It's not an enormous advantage. It's something that's going to jostle back and forth. As mass points change hands. The Medusa's still left over here. McNeil wants to take those out and save the Eruptor there if he can. I don't know if he has managed to save it. Might eat one more shell. Oh. Firing accuracy comes to save the turret there. Or lack of, I should say. A lot more Mantis. Then there are strikers. It's going to be a win on the ground here in the centre for Maptop. Do they have enough to break the top left corner is the question. Icononics now facing Seraphim Navy potentially and uh, Aurora floaty floaty naughty naughty from the bottom right hand corner there from Ryan. That could be tricky to hold. And the anchor firmly under Team 1's control. T2 on the way for Dr. Odeo's comp. Matt Tock, instead of making a solid all-out push for the top, he's trying to pick off that Eruptor by bringing in Medusas. And using most of his Mantis to try and seal this off, although he's not managing it comprehensively. We getting more and more cybering factories those great factories creeping up towards the mountain up here a couple more of those might just be able to plug this electric blue leak that's trickling up the mountainside here that eruptor did bite the dust Focusing on what he can. Got a decision to make to go straight up to the top to try and take out those factories or to try and take out the strikers that have repositioned at the edge of the map and are waiting for more reinforcements. Where are the reinforcements? Well, they're not anywhere nearby. So Map Top rolls up onto the top. Gonna take down a mech. Heavily damaged one of the factories. McNeil repositions. And a lot of Mantis rolling in. Maptok holding the balance of power here on the mountainside. Yeah, that's going to be a hold, surely. Don't know why he's pulling them all down. He can leave one or two up there to finish off the factories. They're going to carry on spitting out units and engineers if he doesn't finish those off. And indeed, 
thinks better off it sends a platoon of mantis back up to the top and that will be the end of those factories what's happening elsewhere least amount of swift winds on the field now for Alflo. t2 navy operational for icononics one siren class cruiser another one actually just completed boarding good anti-air coverage and some nice range those auroras now looking very much out of their depth even though they're floating above the water probably not the best analogy to use or metaphor if you will gunships now circling above for Ryan adding a even more potent aspect to Team 1's forces up at the top left hand corner another mass extractor down for Alflo there goes T1 anti-air but the swift winds turn up from Alflo and he has many more than Ryan does Ryan brings in a couple but uh, if Alflo holds his ground here, assuming there's not too much mobile anti-air in the area, which I don't think there is, he should be able to kill off the rest of those gunships, which he does. And that is a solid win for our 800 rated player there. Now Salem as well. There's not a I was about to say it's not a huge commitment in tech, but there's no commitment in tech at all from Dr. Oidio. Still sitting at T1. And uh, Icononics is clearly making winning the naval battle a priority. He's kind of been forced into it with the dual threat from his mirror here, but also the fact that Ryan has bagged the bottom right-hand corner island and has already shown he's happy to start spitting out hover tanks at him. So, perversely, Icononics actually in a not too uncomfortable position. Gets a couple more of these Salem's out, maybe another cruiser. And that's going to be very hard to stop going forward. Dr. Oidio needs to show some commitment on the naval side of things have a look at what he can actually see. Intel's actually really bad on this area still, as you wouldn't expect it to be much better. 16 minutes gone on an average Joe's game on a map of this size. Some of Dr. Ideo's forces up on the tip of the anchor there. He's just receiving some long range cruiser fire. Easy money. And uh, of course, Iconotic's not aware that he could have start being very much more aggressive with what he's got. It all becomes so easy when you can see everything. So mobile missile launcher fire, a couple of Seraphim mobile missile launchers almost had a go at trying to pronounce that. I'm not going to. Guys uh, get to laugh at my expense enough. Without some linguistic circus in the middle of the cast. I could do without that. It actually doesn't necessarily look scalable, but it very, very much is. Easy access onto that plateau from either end. Now, front collar able to hit back. Meanwhile, up at the top, a little bit of gunship pressure from McNeil. Seeing if he can soften up the top left-hand corner, which is now firmly under Maptox's control. Could do with a few more emplacements scattered around. Certainly some flak. 
T1 Inties going after the gunships. The gunships retreat slightly and draw those interceptors over this ground army which has T2 flak, those skyboxes in it. It's the end of those. Back come the gunships, down go the point defence and the engineers that built them. Team 1 opening up an advantage now. 328 versus 251. Of course, they're sitting on both of the two corners. Top left might be in flux soon, though, with this pressure from McNeil. That's a lot of T2 units in there. It's a lot of pillars. We have the odd T2 unit down here. What do we got? Three rhinos, four hoplites. A couple of the gunships in there. Yes, we have the odd Sky Slammer, but it's only T1, obviously. Got to like McNeil's chances of taking and holding this for a little bit now. Swift wins. I might have something to say about it, though, from Ryan going straight after those gunships. Gunships fall back. Skyboxes open up. This is where the Swift wins get punished on that turn. <coughs> oh, no. So many dead yellow planes. And the gunships that were thinking about it go, nope. Do their best Zoidberg impression. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Back to base. None of that, thank you. Meanwhile, there has been an engagement in the pond. And it's gone very badly for Dr. Oidio as we thought it might. Uh, he has, it's prompted action by the looks of things. He's completed an upgrade to T2 and is working on some destroyers now. Is it too late is the question. There are already three cruisers and four destroyers online. Fortunately, he's got a little bit of time as Icononix's priority is going straight after this island, it would seem. But he really has to prioritize the production now. And you can see all of the build capacity he's pushed towards that. He's thinking exactly the same things that we are. And would you look at that pressure from McNeil. Not content with grabbing the top left and holding it. He's going to send those units on to cause as much damage as they can. It's exactly the right decision. Open all of this area up take down these reinforcing factories which are all at T2 as well a couple of gunships dispatched but there are still skyboxes in here two leading the way and then they turn up en masse they're going to prioritise the skyboxes how many are in the mix uh, well, there weren't many, so he made the judgment call he's going to lose a certain number, but then he'll be able to start making a breakthrough. He didn't factor in the swift wins, though, from Alf Low, turned up very quickly indeed and put a stop to all of that. McNeil still in good position on the ground up at that top left-hand corner, but ASFs turn up from Ryan. He's transitioned neatly into T3 Air has started to blap those swift winds away. So just when we think we have air power and dominance moving in one direction, we do have a couple of ASFs as well from Alflow, but he's obviously ever so slightly behind the curve on ASF production. There's still a good seven or so ASFs there. Another two from Ryan online the pressure down in the bottom right hand corner from icononics meanwhile still be, being applied to ryan's corner island base two mass extractors on the fringe are down and that leaves two up at the top there and that other one right on the edge prioritizing the factories for the time being but he has split his forces so he's holding is Salem's with one cruiser, one siren over here. While sending everything else over in this direction. Large group of engineers to hoover up the mass on the seabed at the same time. We've got 
here. Scrap bomber, shocker, yep. Yeah. For Alfloat, waiting for target of opportunity, no doubt. T3 on the way for McNeil's Com. Still sat in pretty much the same position he's been all game. Front collar hasn't moved a great deal. He's built an inordinate amount of uh, T2 point defense. Must be feeling reasonably secure under there. He's got some TMD, he's got some flak. But Dr. Oidio has abandoned the anchor completely and dropped all the way back to his main base using his comm to get some shield coverage around his new power grid that he's trying to get online. And he's actually, apart from Icononics, he is short stacking upon everybody else in the game in terms of mass. Icononics is behind on 54 and he's on 62. But everybody else is 70s, 80s and upwards. Some over 100 and Ryan's on 133. That's going to be cut down a little bit with the demise you would imagine of the T2 mass extractors here. That's about to happen. Slowly but surely Icononics taking apart that island but talk about efficiency under pressure, Icononics with the smallest eco and economy to draw on, dishing out arguably the most amount of pain thanks to well-timed naval tech upgrade. Lots of blue up on the mountainside now. McNeil firmly in control of the mass points. For now, we are seeing some T3 on the field turn up at the base of the mountain from Maptop. A couple of loyalists in the mix with the rhinos there. And McNeil looks like he's pulling out, maybe. Heading south. Where's the waypoint? Well, it's right down here. Doesn't like the look of the emergence of the T3 assault bot. Thinks, nah, I've only got T1 mechs in play. You can uh, have that back for now if you want. And I will regroup and tech up. I quite like that play and then it's the point in chucking it away I mean you could argue with the numerical advantage he's got that might have been mm, nah. I mean there are only two loyalists but there's a lot of rhinos in here rhinos and obsidians as well so Aeon units presumably belonging to Tim transferred over to Maptox control to help Reclaim control of the mountainside. Shocker hasn't killed anything. It's now got ASFs locked onto it. Ah, oh, the ASF does get shot down, but not before he fires one last blast of energy, which takes down the strap. Strap dies with no kills, it would seem. A lot of torpedo bombers, skimmers coming out now from Ryan, presumably. Let's say presumably the only possible target can be Icononics Fleet. Otherwise, Ryan is doing something seriously wrong. But he's completed the clear out of Ryan from that bottom right-hand corner. It is now open. And it looks like he's actually going after the naval yards. Going straight after that T2 naval factory. He's taking a lot of damage before he gets there. Alflo successfully defending I think that shipyard it does beg the question why that wasn't screened if you had that many ASFs why that wasn't a better screen meanwhile pressure being applied to McNeil he looks so so strong about five ten minutes ago but now we've got loyalists marching in the front door right next to his comm down goes T2 power plant takes an awful lot of stuff with it McNeil T3 comm 15,000 HP at full health not overcharging as much as I'd like him to be hasn't got a lot of spare power Out planes out over the top. Front collar into assist, as is Tim over Dyke.
but the attack stalls. Map talk withdraws a little bit. Team one perhaps getting a bit more excited than they needed to. 25 minutes gone. 438 to 497. Slash that 442 to 510 in favor of team one on the mass count. And now there's a whole new problem brewing for team one as Icononics looking like he's about to take Dr. Audio out of the naval game. We've got two T2 vessels and that's it. And they're not going to last very long. Get firepower of Black Magnitude. And indeed, they don't very little to stop them now, except air power. But of course, we have four cruisers down here. Torpedo bombers are all well and good, but an expensive counter against a well balanced fleet with lots of anti air. Large numbers of skimmers, though, coming in from Ryan. It's not going to save Dr. Oideo's naval yards. And it, it never looked like it was going to. And that changes everything. This fleet now for Icononics can park itself right outside Dr. Audio's base which is with the exception of the power generators up here wide open for attack all of these mass points vulnerable and we've got a lot of cruisers here remember in comes Alphalo with his ASFs they're going to tangle with superior numbers of ASFs from Ryan but it is right over the top of those cruisers. One of the cruisers taken down. Just three remain. We're going to have continual skimmer pressure coming down from the top. Only two cruisers are left now. Another one moving up. He needs to be in full cruiser production, but he's like, nah, monkey lord. Why not? Maptox still looking aggressive, having cleaned out McNeil from the mountain once again. It's been real back and forth up in the top left-hand corner. Icononics moving in to cannibalize what's left. Uh, I say cannibalize. He is literally, apart from down here, he's stripped everything off the island already and will no doubt be hurriedly erecting mass extractors and there we go naughty naughty walkie walkie from our resident gender confused destroyers pushing forward gun upgrade on the way there for Dr. Audio's com map top completes an experimental but where there it is and it's a monkey lord another one on the way as well so game escalating into the experimental phase Tim Overdyke completes would you look at that massive damage in the center of Ryan's base what's that done to his power grid it's not looking great he's having trouble now maintaining power balance with the destruction of two t3 p gens that has got to hurt dr audio with the assistance of colossus recently completed by tim will shut down the Salem pressure but it was worth it I think that's really hurt Ryan who's been doing solid work in the air game 
and Icononic's still in control of the pond. Meanwhile, back over here, McNeil is in trouble once again. He's a little bit more shielded this time. He's got a few more Ravagers. They need to take out this Monkey Lord, though, which is now in range. Opens up the Microwave Laser. EMPs disabling everything, of course. The demise of those Loyalists, as tricky as always. McNeil eats the Microwave Laser, but he's got a personal shield. Needs to overcharge the Monkey Lord, and he does. Down it goes, but so does his health. He's down to around 11,000 HP. But the collapse is complete. Maptok runs out of units. There's more pressure coming in from the east there from Tim Overdyke. Front collar comes in to assist. Lots of siege tanks heading north. It's going to collide with those Aeon forces. And crucially, McNeil still has a lot of functional units left of his own. They are going to wipe the invading pink forces. And the attack is very comfortably repelled. Yes, we've lost a few T3 PDs. But this is now a very rich mass field for McNeil to benefit from. If he can, there are a couple of trebuchets here causing problems at range. That is a monkey lord right on his doorstep. Now, Icononics has backed off slightly. He's caused a lot of damage here. All of these mass points are down for Dr. Audio, who's producing just 29 mass per tick. Those destroyers have wiped him out pretty much. He's got a nice healthy mass bar to fall back on, but his production just sucks right now when everybody else is well over 100 and pretty comfortable. Ryan has sort of got his power balance back in hand, having got one of those reactors operational again. That Monkey Lord, is that the second one or still the first one? I can't immediately see another brown experimental wandering around. Did we even mention that Icononics is rocking fecal brown? I don't think we did. I don't know what happened there. There's one person in the community who likes to pretend that that's bronze, but no, that's poo. You know who you are. Pretend that you go for bronze poo as you're pulling no one, man. No one! An engagement of colossal proportions is brewing now in the centre between front collar and Tim Overdyke and another Colossus, of course, from Ryan coming in to assist from behind. The Monkey Lord stands no chance. And I think these T3 and T2 units from front of the collar aren't going to fare much better either. Ravagers going up back here. McNeil determined to take down these experimentals. It's a nice left turn. Will it save the Colossus? I think it will. They're going to have to change up target and those hubs so quick on the ground. That is not looking great for team two. Neil should overcharge some of those hubs as they roll past, but I think his forward base might finally be kaput position that he's held throughout the entirety of the game about to get well and truly rolled that's gonna provide huge operational value for team one opening up this whole area now to advance and a monkey lord from Matok as well Turning up at the perfect time. That could cause all sorts of problems if it's allowed to get in down here. Lots of ASFs to protect it. Run screen for Ryan. Gets a good engage on the back of Alflo's fighters who are getting well and truly wiped here on this engage. That's gone so badly for Alflo. Good solid micro from Ryan
Monkey Lord continues to advance. Lots of those Harbingers still online as well. Icononics completes that Monkey Lord. Finally. And now a couple of experimentals from Front Collar might just might save but Neil's base just might uh, has dealt with one of the threats where's the Colossus it's locked on to McNeil's commander it's not looking particularly healthy McNeil strolls out of range Colossus is chasing the Monkey Lord, though, from Front Collar isn't far behind. It opens up on the side of the GC, and the GC is so low on health, it certainly can't deal with that, especially not with extra fire coming in from the Thota. Oh, solid defense from Team 2. Keeps McNeil in the game. That was looking pretty dicey looking like he might have been taken out of it to all intents and purposes t3 on the way for dr audio's commander who's done a pretty good job actually at re-establishing control over these mexes engineer reclaim warts going to go better for dr audio huge numbers of engineers in the area Excuse me. And concerned about what's been going on over here. I'm sure Icononics would have liked to have sent that Monkey Lord up to ass assist uh, operations up here. But instead he felt it was needed in the middle. He's donated it over to McNeil. And uh, everyone donating their Monkey Lords to McNeil it would seem. It's good teamwork from Team 2. I like what I see there. Look at the uh, kill-loss ratio, though. It's almost 2 to 1 for Team 2. 0.66 for Team 1. So, yes, Team 1 have been making great maneuvers down here and opening up the field. But uh, I think a lot of it's actually down to Icononics and what he's been able to do on very, very modest budget historically. And how much he's taken out with uh, just a handful of units. Restorers from Ryan look to reclaim their former homeland in the bottom right. Oust the last of Icononics, who's fair to say isn't losing a great deal. He hadn't invested in that bottom right-hand corner. They were all T1 mexes. So it's not going to hurt him too much. He's still on 172. Top player at the moment, eco-wise, is Matok. He's on 240 in control of that mountainside, of course, still. Who's uh, number two after that? We've got another 200 there. That's Alflo. Our uh, rear god air player there for team two. Then we're in the 180s. That's Tim Overdyke. And front collar in the center. 177 for Ryan. 172 for Icononics. McNeil's had a hard time. Obviously, he's on 78. And Dr. Audio, similarly, doing a little bit better. is on 97. But team one overall in the lead by about 50, well, 45 mass. Something like that. And McNeil, with those gifted experimentals, it's not every day you get three of them just handed over to you. Like he might be about to forge a bit of a rebirth here. He's starting work on his own fat boy as well. Give himself a decent ranged counter to a lot of the stuff that's been coming his way. If he can park that behind these. Cause them all sorts of problems on their attacks. It's actually a nice little dip there. Great cover for his commander. Very sensible positioning. Like what I see there. But what he wants to do is he wants to get out here and 
suck up some of this mass. There is a ton of mass here. Get that fat boy built in no time. Of course, we've got a Colossus wreck right here as well. Just needs to get a couple of NGs out here. He's got one on reclaim duty. Might as well send that in. Missing a trick there on the reclaim side of things. Front collar completes another experimental. It's another Ethota in the middle. And now we're just entering that phase of the game, the lull before the storm. Everybody rebuilding, formulating their next strategies. Megaliths on the way for Maptok. One nearly completed. Lots of GCs on the way for Tim. And astonishingly, Dr. Oidio trying to re-establish his naval game. And Icononics has dropped right back. Can they see what is going on over there? Yes, they can. So, at some point soon, he's got to get out there and deny that. After all of his hard work throughout this game, definitely does not want to be yielding control of the pond. Really, pressure though, he just couldn't keep up. He was so far behind on Eco, and now he's really caught up. So, if you've been wondering what he's been doing, he's been doing just that, Ecoing pretty hard, trying to get re established. Trebuchet's rolling in behind the Megalith and the Colossus up front. Fat Boy's still only 60% down or so. A horrible feeling this is going to go much, much better for Maptok than it is for McNeil. Crab rolling backwards. Focusing on Percival's and the like. Ryan with a huge restore account. Going straight after the Ithota. Gets engaged by the ASFs from Alflow. Where are his own ASFs? That's the question. Well, he hasn't got very many of them. But that's gone very, very well on the ground. And in the air, I'd say, for Team 1. We have T3 Mobile Anti-Air, though. He'll want to prioritise those. Seemingly not. He's going after the Ithotas instead. Doesn't allow him to stick around for very long. And don't forget, we've got a couple of flayers there as well. And Fat Boy, very nearly done. Actually, interesting. So, did he manage to kill off a Colossus there? Or did it withdraw? I can't see... Losses. It must be sort of killed off in the exchange. So, not an entire loss for Team 2. Spy planes out for our float. Once again, Icononics looking like he's about to get underway to take out those factories in the background there. Doesn't want to leave it too long. Dr. Oidio's recovering. He's still behind 124 mass compared to Icononics 220. But doesn't want to let himself start facing a fight in the sea again. One Navy Yard right in the corner already 45% done towards T2. Fat Boy takes out a Megalith and now can go to town on these engineers and these units. Engineers trying to scoop up some of this mass. He needs to put a stop to that. Trebuchets don't last long at all under that shower of Fat Boy artillery. Reclaim operation for Map Top. Torn asunder. Another megalith complete. 
needs to get the fat boy in range. That the Thota taking a lot of damage. Icononix completes another Monkey Lord. Ah, oh, this is bugging me. Send in the boats, man. Send in the boats. Looks like he heard me. Some Zooey's out front trying to encourage him to wait just a little bit. Give him a bit more time. Ryan circling with his own ASFs and uh, still comfortably behind in number from Alflo who is going to once again potentially have a bad engage. No. Nope. Ryan desists. Two naval yards down. Cruiser's under fire though. And uh, where are the Salem's? They're back here. He needs to get those destroyers to engage those submarines. There, is that an attack missile? like artillery. It is artillery. We have a couple of Southerners in the middle. Or front collar. Colossus down. Up by Maptox forces. 33 kills so far by the fat boy. And that is a lot of harbingers. You don't want to park them there though. They are going to withdraw. There's so much artillery now being deployed. Armies of base T3 units can't get close enough without getting broken up. And Dr. Audio doing great work trying to keep Icononix's fleet at bay with those T1 subs. Definitely was an error to hold those Salem's back. Needed to get those up front. If he had, all of these shipyards would have already been taken out. But I don't think they're going to survive a second attack, Dr. Audio's naval yards. Hindsight, it might have been better to build sea defences with lots of T2 artillery instead and keep this fleet away minutes gone and it's astonishing in the last 20 minutes I mean how little movement has there been the last major major development in terms of territory really was Maptok taking the top left and ousting McNeil down here that was the the last significant play that changed anything this is rap rapidly turning into the Battle of the Somme Restorers just eating ASF's fire as they pointlessly trying to take out one Percival and don't manage it. <laughs> Alflo has a field day engaging those and finally Ryan responds but he hasn't got the numbers to tangle. Alflo massively superior air force. Icononix now rolling forward to once again rinse and repeat the ousting of Dr. Oidio from the water. We saw it half an hour ago. We're about to see it again. Trident up front. What restorers Ryan has left. Hurled into the fray. But so many sirens. So much anti-air. Gunships clumping. That's not going to help his cause at all. Got a lot more restorers back here, though. Maybe I spoke too soon. AOE. 
coming into effect as they clump. Splits off another group. That's sensible. They chew through those cruisers in no time. But it's not enough to save Oidio's T2 naval yard. His last and final T2. And in comes Alflo's Air Force. Ignoring the ASFs from Ryan. Going straight after those gunships. And then changing his mind. So he wants to get a better engage. He's had some appalling engages in this. Might have actually been worth ignoring the gunships and going off the ASFs first. He's not going to save the important vessels for Icononics. They're all going to go down. That is an absolute naval catastrophe for Icononics. He's lost all of the cruisers, but he has got a lot of Salem still. And they've made it to the shoreline. Are they going to sprout legs and go on another rampage? It all depends on what happens in the skies, how long Alflo can remain in there, how many gunships can he take out. Ryan bringing in more fighters all the time. Oh, last couple of gunships go down and he's still got more ASF numbers than Ryan. He's still going to hold the skies and those Salem's in range already to take out just about everything of importance around here that's undefended. We've got Zooey's and things rolling in, but that's not going to matter. Dr. Oidio going to take a huge mass hit, down to 108 mass already. Meanwhile, in the center, Team 2 finally getting up the courage to hit back. Maptok pinned back at his base. Tim, much the same situation. And three fat boys online. McNeil in a position to really hurt Team 1 at range from relative safety. Oh. Front line getting picked apart. Maptop's going to hit back with some Gunthers. Little T2 artillery installation going up there. Fat boy, the most northern fat boy of this clump. Absorbing the fire, it's down to around 40% of the shield health already. Meanwhile, back over here, we've got strap bombers from Ryan still trying to work on softening up this fleet. But the damage against Dr. Audio is already done. He has one remaining T2 mech that's in range. There's a T3 one up here, but I think that's a little too far for the Salem's unless they go on a little bit of a trek. Now they're going after the shielded T2 P-Gen installation over here. Should grab at least one or two of these. Oh, maybe they'll grab all of them. They all look like they might be in range. Dr. Roydio. How the mighty have fallen. Or how the doing reasonably okay have fallen <laughs> <coughs> and McNeil sneaks three Percivals back up onto the mountainside for the first time in a good 25 minutes 30 minutes <coughs> he has got bricks coming his way three Percy's versus two bricks though he will win that exchange there are more loyalists coming up as well but the proximity of what is now four fat boys to these bases has to be concerning Maptok and Tim. They look like they're ready for a bit of a breakout here. Two megaliths, a whole host of harbingers and a GC. They catch one of the fat boys. It's got a little bit too far forward. The next casualty, major casualty, might be that megalith. It's down into the red on 23k. Major experimental engagements underway in the center of the map. Down goes a monkey lord there for front collar. Tim loses a GC. Harmager's now in range. Couple of chickens still alive. Megalith still alive on 27,000 hit points. It's the other Megalith though that's taking most of the fat boy fire now. Northerly Chicken gets in range to open up on that Megalith as well. 13,000, 12,000, 2,000. Bye-bye, baby. 
Southern Chicken out of commission too. Casualties on all sides. Harbingers in retreat. Megalith is going to kill the other chicken. Down it goes. Map Top trying to keep that Megalith alive. But taking sustained fat boy fire. Also got that horrible weapon of death inbound. It looked like it dropped short there. Launched from the Thota just before death. Goodness gracious me. What an exchange. And again, no gain for either side. In the centre. McNeil. Still has a couple of fat boys in play. But they're going to be under threat soon from these restorers that are inbound. Where's Alflo and his ASFs? They're being pinged. They're going to get brought in. Will the restorers pick off a fat boy in time is the question. There's a lot of flack. On the ground, in come the ASFs from Alflo. It's a pretty good engage. Now, yeah, fat boy secure. Ryan loses yet more restorers. Potentially gets a good engage on the side with his own ASFs. That's gone well for him, but he needs to disengage now. He's taking a lot of flak from the ground. Actually, air control now looks to be with Team 1 for the first time in a long time. Ryan looks like he has superior ASF numbers. Tim says he reckons that they've lost it. I don't know about that. Too early to say, quite frankly. This could go either way. Nuke launcher online and operational missile construction underway. Looks about... 8% done, something like that. Maybe 10%. Um, very, very manly T3NG. Just uh, sitting there under Gunther fire. A lot of it is hitting the cliff edge there. But it manages to scoop the rest of the mass from that uh, megalith before finally getting popped. Map talk. Interesting place to set up your Gunthers. I guess they can comfortably fire over the crater there. But so can the fat boy, which is going after Map Talk's com. Map Tok withdrawing to his base. Three fat boys right in the middle, causing so many issues right now. Megalith being pinged to move, but it's going to go down. And now we have some battleships online for Icononics. That really opens things up from what he can engage with now. Check out what they can hit if they move up here. All of this in range. Needs to focus on keeping them alive. Needs to get as many cruisers out there as possible. These gunships are going to be gunning for them. You'll excuse the blatantly unfunny pun. Neil over here with his comm completes or is about to complete another fat boy. And doing so well with those. And once again, destroyers on the move for... Icononics. Spy planes out over here. Getting uh, unnecessarily bombarded by fat boy. That's, that's what they call overkill. The 
Strategic launch detected. And there's a nuke. Where's it going? It's going after McNeil's commander. McNeil with no SMD in sight and not moving his comm. That's the first thing you do when you hear that. You move your commander. And he's not doing it. Came out from Maptok up here. And I'm sorry, but you deserve to be the first evacuee from the game. Boom, baby! Why didn't he move his comm? I mean, if he'd moved it up here, he probably would have escaped. It's not a lot of travel time. There's the nuke launcher. It's debatable, but you try at least. And that changes everything. Absolutely everything. This game suddenly blown wide open with McNeil's departure. It's caused so many headaches for Maptok and Tim in the center who can now expand. They can feel safe up here. Maptok can once again focus on echoing up in the mountain. It's very unlikely Team 2 are going to cause problems there now. GC brought in by Tim, hoovers up the rest of those Salems of, look how many, four, seven, eleven Salem wrecks there, it's a lot of casualties, GC might be one as well, taking battleship fire. Now, totals on mass with the departure of McNeil. 866 versus 691. That is enormous. But over the course of the game, Team 2 on 1.96 million versus 1.79 million. So that's pretty damn significant as well over the course of the game. That's how well they were doing. It's a good 100 and, what, 180,000 mass there. That Team 2 have had more than Team 1 over the course of the game. But uh, if this keeps up, it's not going to continue like that. 690 now to 842. Massive differential. Little run by on the ground from Maptok. Trying to run interference, do everything they can to stop or slow up. Team 2's re-establishment of control of this section here in the core mass. Front collar has have to shift his focus over here to plug this gap. Tim moving to engage in the center. They're fortunate that Maptok has had his forces so resoundingly depleted. If it was a little bit earlier when he still had megaliths and things kicking around, that really would be it. Shielded the Dotas and GCs, albeit partially. Versus two GCs and the Megalith. We do have one Megalith online, Matt Top. Down goes the Ethota. That Iron Storm is going to be very inconveniently placed. Another GC heading up from the south. Front collar stepping up here. With his 259 mass eco at the experimental production. They focus down Tim's GC. But not before losing another one of their own. And then there was just Maptox Megalith that's in full retreat. Bricks in the area but they're getting sucked up and ionized by the enormous face goggle weapon of the Colossus and away moves the Megalith trying to get to cover he's running towards friendly territory and that is going to work out just fine those GC's for front collar are going to turn tail and run and take Megalith fire in the back of the head all day long as they do so but look at these galaxies Two battleships in the bay, raining hell down on Dr. Oidio all day.
Ryan moves to intercept. Again with Restore Power. Front collar runs out of experimentals. Brings his flak forward. Doubtful Ryan's going to stick around to eat much of that. Indeed he doesn't. He withdraws. And still they have been unable to get control of McNeil's old base. Thanks to lovely, lovely mobile pressure from these loyalists that keep skirting the edges of the map from map top. Trying to get into the middle of Alflo's base, but hello! T3 heavy artillery online. No kills as yet. Must have just been completed. You can already see the T1 P gens for power assist going up around it. A couple more shields for defensive coverage. That might change the perspective of this game just a smidge. It's now going to be consistent long range fire raining down on the bases. And look at Ryan's base. It's wide open. Ryan could potentially find it difficult to sustain production of the restorers which have been reasonably instrumental at holding certain parts of bay the experimentals in the middle for team two the fleet often for iconics over here in the pond have all been hampered by the restorer production and engagements that have gone on over the course of the game 57 minutes of it we'll start to achieve some mobile eco now he's starting to spit out some support commanders but that's no good if he loses all of his PGENs and of course all of his air factories which will be priority one I'm sure for that emissary which starts firing its first shells across the map we will see what Alflo is hungry for I would be hungry for the easy kills if I were him trajectory suggests he agrees Ryan priority target and it's going straight in towards the power grid <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh no three T3 power plants and two T3 air factories with one shell that's very good value for money wouldn't you say another one inbound Ryan set to get absolutely brutalized by the static T3 drops just short of grabbing another couple of pgen kills and of course they've still got all of this fire coming in from the ships down there Ryan's trying to combat those with banks of miasma. Ah, Kaflui! Three more T3 air factories and another T3 power plant. What's that done to his power? He's still doing okay. Of course, he's, uh, I have to say, we've got the support commanders now, so he'll be able to hold out reasonably well. He won't want to lose all of his PGENs which if he doesn't start getting some shield gens online is very likely going to happen. Maptok advancing with a couple of megaliths meanwhile. Also has some assistance there on the ground from Dr. Oidio, a rare Ethota turning up on the ground for him. Front line still getting pummeled by Galaxy Fire. His power demands have dropped him dramatically with the destruction of all of his air factories. Now can't spend his mass quickly enough. The Thota will die first in that exchange, but I'm sure the Megaliths will score a comfortable kill on the Colossus shortly after. Megalith turns up for Icononics as well. Monkey Lord absorbing some fire as well that fire disappears when they lose vision on it oh, he's nearly got it he 
He's nearly got it. Don't switch fire now. There it goes. Now one negalith lies all by its lonesome. Would you look at these hordes of greedy engineers for map talk coming out en masse. Groups of like eight or ten engineers just shipwrecking those experimentals. Ryan locks onto those galaxies with what's left of his restorer force. They don't last long. Alflo didn't even get to use his ASFs very much there. That was mostly all the fire coming off the huge quantities of cruisers that Icononics has stacked up. Ryan and his attempts to hit back at the fleet with T2 artillery not going great. Gets his comm under shield coverage a bit further back. And it really is damage limitation now. A couple of GCs on the march for Tim. Coming down an unusual approach for him. Down that western edge of the map. Alflo with operational air impunity. Locks onto it with his restorers. Hasn't got many though so it's taking a long time to chew through all of the hit points on the GCs. Icononics turns up in time to lend a hand with a couple of experimentals once the Monkey Lord opens up. Should be over relatively quickly. He might still score a kill on the Monkey, actually. The Monkey Lord is going to go down, so that's a, a shame for Icononics. Uh, two GCs for a Monkey, they'll take that. But still, they haven't managed to grab McNeil's base. Team 1 have been brilliant at running interference down this side. They just can't. There's so much mass to be had here. Remnants of this base is still largely intact. And of course, you've got all the mass extractors. There's five. You have mass extractors belonging to Alflo up on the plateau, admittedly. But they're still further north. And five mexes down here, which they can't grab and hold. Alflo probably could have done if he hadn't have been investing in artillery down there. Another one on the way. The artillery has been more than useful and interesting nuke selection there. Using it as point defense against the megaliths. That megalith will tank that and tank that surprisingly comfortably, I humbly suggest. There will still be a lot of hit points despite the thing actually hitting the body. As I go, 40% health left after eating that nuke. Another nuke. This time it's out from Maptok. The second nuke there. It's 45 kills to its name already, having taken out McNeil. Where is it going? What's well, going on the front line? We must be trying to skirt the edge of an SMD. That SMD, which has three anti nuke missiles loaded. A couple of P gens vulnerable, but it does activate the anti nuke, so no joy there on Maptox nuclear counter attack. Meanwhile, the galaxies continue their reign of terror. 19 kills on that one, 25 kills on that one. Not focusing on Ryan anymore. Looks like they've switched up towards Tim's front line. But the tide of experimentals has it's dropped off dramatically, which is funny because if you look, I mean that must be reclaimed. That must be reclaimed. Tim is on yeah it was on 700 a minute ago that's dropped back but it's still 1k versus 707 team one way ahead on generated eco and they uh 200,000 almost up 180 190,000 up on mass over the course of the game thanks to this advantage that they've had for so long they can't seem to spit out enough units to do anything with Got any Seraphim players? They do. Dr. Audio could have started work on an experimental bomber. They could wrestle back control of the skies. 
That's such a terrible idea. Just pretend Guile's not here, guys. That's the worst idea in history. Uh, forgot about the enormous air force that Alflo has. Had they uh, not lost all of the air factories to uh, the emissary fire, Ryan might have been able to hold that air force at bay. And then an experimental bomber would have dealt with everything here. But having said that, the last of the galaxies, they didn't look like they were in that much trouble earlier. But the last of the galaxies now sinking to the seabed as uh, cool guys don't look at explosions. GC just rolls off into the distance like, yeah, I did that. Heading back now. This might have had something to do with it as well. An outrageous bank of miasmas there from Tim Overdyke. Who actually has the only really positive kill-death ratio of the whole of his team. 1.08. Outflow on 1.11. Icononics. What a game he's had with the, uh, the fleet down here. 2.74. That's very, very efficient work. Ryan trying desperately, trying anything now that the galaxies have been destroyed. Has rolled down here with four support commanders, thrown down three shield gens. He's trying to get a Tempest online. That's very optimistic. There's still a lot of vessels down here. And you're going to need a lot more than four support commanders there. You would need a lot more, maybe another five or six get some real shield coverage up and spam some real artillery emplacements to take out those cruisers before you could even think about starting a Tempest. That was never going to happen. I admire the optimism, but Ryan is going to have to back up. going to save his support commanders by hightailing it out of there. Sensible decision, sir. Down go the shield gens. And away they go to base. And finally, finally, front collar. I, I say this tentatively because of what's happening, what's happened over the last 20 minutes. But finally, it looks like he's re-established control over his old teammate McNeil's base. Second emissary nearly complete. 9,000 hit points of 12,000. Dipping out of the green there into the green. Map top. Spamming up megaliths. And would you look at that, Scathis on the way. Yeah, does it tell us what the range is like? Yes, it does. So that outer band down at the bottom there, you can see everything will be in range of that bad boy if and when it completes. All of this will be vulnerable. Not to mention Icononics Fleet. That might be the thing that allows Ryan to get re-established. One hour, six minutes gone. These guys tooling up for the next phase of gameplay. Map top. Just flying with the construction on that Scathis. 14,000 of 17 and a half thousand done. Emissary nearly complete. Of course, if it's well scouted. You get the impression Alflow could just target that old whole area. These are all Phase 1 upgraded T2 Cyber and Shields. They are affording virtually no protection at all. If he lands a couple of shells in there now, that is all for naught. His attention for the time being with the emissary fire. Actually, the rear plateau with mass points at the back belonging to Ryan. More like that. No, that's done it. Forget about the delayed AOE on the emissary. Not 
like the miasmas. It kills in phases. Ryan, to his credit, has got very done very well getting re-established. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven T3 air factories back online. 25k power production. Could be getting to the point soon once he's re-established his air force where uh, flying experimentals might not be such a terrible idea. It's a very different traje trajectory for that emissary shell. Where's it going? Well, it's going over here, I reckon. And the Scathis is complete, and it is opening up on Front Collar's front line, I guess. That looks like where the shells are headed. Obligatory slow down now. It's not the front line at all. It's front collar's main base. Strap bombers, though, have been massing for Alflo. He's going to run screen with his own ASFs. I think he has a numbers advantage. He's to turn him around. They, oh man, those strats running right through the Air Force, but a lot of them are still alive. They're going straight after the scat. This Maptox comes right by it. He's going to get picked off. I don't believe it. Maptox ejected at 108. And that surely is game right there. Lovely little snipe by Alflo right up the middle. Brings those bombers directly through. Ryan's air wing. I thought they, they were all going to get shot down, but they were kind of half on a turn. So it was only the front ones that got brutalized. And of course, that inadvertently saves Front Collar, who was getting brutalized by that Scathis. Still gets to keep his nuke launcher as well, which is taking some damage. That's not bad work, though. Look at that. Having given Ryan a whole lot of abuse about how that wasn't going to work, he has got re-established. To be fair, partly because Icononix has not moved his fleet forward. If he moves that forward, I'm sure that would all get taken down. But because of the stealth gen... Well, it's been scouted. So maybe he wasn't aware of it at the time. But he just needs to move those boat forwards. And that... It's the end of that little fire base. And he needs to do it quickly as well because he's going to start taking fire at the moment. It's focusing on those engineers and the... Is it engineers? No, it's all floating flat, excuse me. And there's the move command. There is... Uh, so there are two shield gens there. One T2, one T3. T2 going to absorb the brunt of the attack initially. Support commanders get straight to work on another shield gen, but the fire that's coming in is either prioritizing the T2 or the T3 reactor at the back. That goes pop. He's going to lose all sorts of other stuff in the collateral damage. No, don't switch up to the T2 mechs. What was that? It's a support commander. Don't worry about it. Shield is going to ping on, but it's going to be too late. Oh, there go all the miasmas. Just one T2 artillery emplacement remains. Meanwhile, back over here on the march, Icononix, who's engaging on two fronts with his boats and with the megaliths over here. They're getting embroiled in a battle with Colossuses on both sides. Front collar with three and Tim with about five or six. Another one back here wants to get that embroiled in the fight if he can. I think this is definitely going to go better though for Team 2. Team 2 who are still behind on mass by about 40, 41 mass or so on generated eco. Astonishing. They've been behind the whole time, but thanks to fantastic equipment that they built at the right time, it's given them great kill death ratios. Emissary fire once again falling on Ryan's base. Oh my goodness! He eats an artillery shell for once. I didn't miss it. 
eats an artillery shell that took out the T3 power plant, adding a little bit of extra damage to the shell. There he goes. And then, of course, I miss another one straight after it. Or is that... No, that's just the, uh, the support commanders going up. And that surely, that is game now. There's no way out of it. They need to send the rest of those experimentals in. Come on, guys. Let's get tooled up and go in. Tim's front line that has stood for about one hour, maybe a little bit longer, maybe one hour, eight minutes, or sorry, one hour, two minutes. Is now about to get taken apart. Dr. Oidio brings out his last experimental experiment. <laughs> Well, you've got to admire their optimism, excuse me. A paragon under construction. Started in jest, of course, I'm sure. <coughs> we can do it, says Tim. What an entertaining game. Dr. Audio has done a good job at expanding out this way, actually. Trying to take all of the mass that's been vacated by the departure of Matok. But it's all for naught. Look at that. Six megaliths from Icononics, who I would like to officially award MVP. There have been some very key players in this one. You've got to say that uh, Alflo's been great with his Air Force and the Emissaries have been well absolutely essential and they arguably have been game changers but in terms of what's gone down here on the fleet uh, he's been instrumental in the latter stages at holding off attacks coming in in the middle with experimentals he's put together and would you look at that kill death ratio 3.06 that is huge absolutely huge been brutally efficient Alflo Coming in for the snipe. Going after Dr. Audio's con. There's a lot of anti-air. But they all prioritize the lead bomber. No, he's not. He's going after Tim. Have they got any bombs away? Have they all been shot down? Tim. Shield coverage gone. Eats one, eats two, eats three, eats four. Boom, baby. There goes Tim. The linchpin for Team 1 throughout the game. In the center, holding everything together. Leaving Dr. Oidio all by his lonesome. Guileworthy, apparently. Yes, I concur. Absolutely concur. We like games like this. Let's send him the replay. Yes, you should do that. Thank you in advance to McNeil, in fact, who did send in the replay. And there goes Dr. Oidio with a control K. He knew the end was coming. So he opened up a vacuum seal and let in the poisonous Arctic air on this weird planet. For some reason, they're fighting over, even though apparently it's inhospitable. But I hope you enjoyed it, guys. As a little bit of a, a base fest, admittedly. A little slower, perhaps, than your average one. But I... I kind of love that kind of game where uh, stuff like T3 artillery becomes instrumental in the late stages. As I said, always more to come from me in the future, guys. Don't forget, if you feel so inclined, please do support me on Patreon. I've had a massive drop-off in numbers lately, uh, which kind of sucks and uh, hopefully won't end up putting the channel in jeopardy. But all support is very much welcomed and appreciated, so please do give generously. Each donation helps support me and by extension the channel and the community. So thank you in advance for any and all donations. Until next time, guys, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile, signing out.